Welcome back to Mr. Drew Paints With You. Today I want to show you how to prime your own panels to paint on. Now previously on the channel I showed you how to mount canvas to a panel and I will put a card up in the top here for you to look at if you want to go back and look at that video. But this is just priming a panel to paint on without gluing canvas to it. So come a little closer and I'll show you some of the supplies that I use. So let's talk about what type of supplies you're going to need for priming your own panels. First off, we're going to need the wood to uh, create the panels. I like using quarter inch birch plywood. So here you can see it's, uh, it's a pretty thick plywood here. Uh, I like using that. I prefer this over masonite. Uh, I, uh, people have used birch plywood for centuries as a support for painting on. So I just, I trust it. I like this. You can find this at Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, any hardware store. You can, you can find it in four foot by eight foot sheets. You can also get it in smaller two foot by two foot sheets or two foot by four foot sheets. They can cut it down for you at the hardware store, but uh, you know, be kind to them. You don't want to say, hey, give me a full four foot by eight foot sheet and I want you to cut me, you know, 200 five by seven uh, panels because they, they're really not going to have time for that. But they can probably cut, you know, four or five, maybe half a dozen panels out for you at a time. I'm blessed enough to have a, a table saw still from when I was a carpenter. So I can just, uh, you know, at my luxury, cut these down any size I want, any time I want. So that's something to think about if you want to invest in kind of getting a little workshop. A, a table saw is super dangerous, but very handy. All right, so the birch plywood, one side is going to be smoother than the other. Uh, you can see here on the back, there's this pretty defined knot and there's actual little divots and voids in there. So you're going to want to make sure not to prime that side. You're going to want to prime the opposite side. Uh, so just find the smoothest side with the least amount of defects and uh, that was the side you're going to want to prime. Make sure that it's free of any type of dust. You don't want any oil or grease on there. I usually take a damp paper towel and just lightly dust it to make sure all the excess little dust particles are off of there. You can see this one already has a coat of primer on it and uh, this one has nothing on it. So you're going to want to do at least two coats of gesso. So speaking of gesso, let's talk about that. This is what I used for a long time. It's just regular Liquitex Basics acrylic gesso. You can find this. You can even get it in, um, you know, gallon jugs. You can find this at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, maybe even Walmart. Sometimes in the craft section, they might have some gesso. So I like this. I've used this for a long time, but something about this acrylic gesso is that it's a little bit absorbent. And if you've never used it, what that, uh, what that means is if you're doing oil painting on it, especially that primer kind of just sucks the oil out of the paint and it makes it look really matte and flat. But I did hear about another product by the Michael Harding Paint Company, and this is a non-absorbent acrylic primer. So this is my first time using this product. I'm kind of excited to see how it turns out. Uh, I have been using ampersand pre-primed panels for the last couple months, and I'm really happy with those. They're not as absorbent as the panels I get when I use the regular Liquitex gesso. So hopefully this will uh, you know, give me a nice surface to work on and won't suck out as much oil from the, uh, the paint. Now this is an acrylic priming. You can also get oil primers. Um, they work a little bit differently. If you're going to prime any type of panel with oil primer, you're going to want to use a PVA sizing to protect the wood from that oil primer. Think about, you know, if you've got a nice juicy piece of fried chicken on a paper towel and all that oil and grease, how that soaks into the paper. Same thing will happen with your boards or any type of canvas if you don't have a sizing to protect that surface from the oil paint. Acrylic paint, it's really no problem. That kind of seals itself. But uh, with, with oil paint, if you're going to paint oil on wood or a board or anything like that, uh, so even with the oil primer, you're going to want to have some type of a, uh, a barrier between that and the oil. So this is 
acrylic once again, which they call a universal primer. So with acrylic primer, you can paint oil on top of that. You can paint acrylic on top of that. You can paint gouache or tempera on top of that. With an oil primer, you can only paint oil paint on top of that. So that's something to consider. Another thing is the time factor, where this will dry in a matter of minutes, where the oil primer is gonna be a number of days before it's dry enough for you to paint on. Uh, so that's something else to consider. Uh, there is so much to play with and experiment with, uh, with priming and surfaces. I think it's worth kind of exploring many different options and seeing what you like. As far as applying the primer to the boards, I use a couple things. I use just a regular house brush. This works great for covering especially large areas. Uh, and today I want to try this super, super fine foam roller. I'm going to apply the, the primer with the brush, brush it on, and then I'm going to go over with this to get a smooth surface. And that's also up to you if you want a heavier textured surface or a smoother surface. The brush will leave some track marks. And so you're going to be able to see that and it'll show through your paint. If you like that, then that's fine. You can leave that. Uh, but if you want a smoother surface for maybe more detailed painting, then try the roller. I'm excited to see how this works and hoping, I'm hoping this will give a nice smooth surface. So with this acrylic primer, you're going to want to do at least two coats. Uh, and you can see here, once again, this already has a, a one coat on it. You can see it has kind of a whitish tint to it. That first coat can be thinned down with a little bit of water and that'll help it flow on nicer. And then the second coat, you can use just straight primer. So I have some that already have one coat on them. And so I'm going to prime these with a second coat of this Michael Harding non-absorbent acrylic primer. So a couple other incidentals you might want to have on hand is a jug of water for cleanup. I would highly recommend that. I'm going to use this palette knife or trowel to scoop out some of the primer. I have a piece of palette paper here so I can scoop out some of that primer onto the paper and then load my brush with the primer. And then also sandpaper. So I said you're going to need two coats of primer on these boards. So between coats I like to take the sandpaper and just smooth it out. Uh, 150 grit sandpaper should be smooth enough and you don't have to go crazy sanding it. Just, you know, go over it a little bit. Use circular motions so you can get an even flat surface. And then once again, before I reprime that, I'll take a damp towel and just dust off the excess primer from the sanding. So that's about it for the supplies here. Let me get set up and we'll start priming. Let me show you doing a first coat before I get into the second coats. So here I've got my clean birch plywood panel. And something else I forgot to mention is just protect your tabletop work surface. I've just got some craft paper rolled out here. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of water in my brush and mix that in with some of the primer to get a little bit of a looser coat for this first coat here. You really don't need a ton to cover a board. Like this amount that I've scooped out here will probably cover three or four boards at least. And this is that Michael Harding non-absorbent primer. It's going on really nicely. I'm definitely excited to see how this works. You can prime both sides and you can prime all four edges if you'd like. What that will do is it'll seal, seal up the panel and won't allow any moisture to get in at all. So if you wanted you could paint all four edges and both sides. Something else that could be good for is if you wanted just to use these for practice, then you'd be able to paint on both sides and kind of save yourself some money on boards. You can prime pretty much anything, really. I've seen artists like old Russian paintings that have been done on cardboard. Uh, so if you're just looking to do a quick study and you're not worried about permanency, then yeah, by all means, prime a piece of cardboard or, or uh, illustration board or mat board, something like that, that will work. So that covered really, really nicely. That was, that's quite opaque compared to the Liquitex primer. I guess it's what they say, you get what you pay for. So there you can see that's one coat. This is no coats. This is one coat of the Liquitex and it's a little bit more transparent. So I'm going to let that dry. 
Uh, you want to be careful. Uh, you don't want to put a ton of primer on there. If it starts oozing over the edge, then it's going to glue itself to the paper on your tabletop. It's not a huge deal. You can cut it off, but I just try to be careful not to, um, not to get a bunch of primer dripping over the edge. So now let me get some other panels set out and let's roll some of that primer on these other panels here. All right, so I've got a group of panels here ready for priming. That's something you might want to consider. It's going to be a lot more efficient and save you time if you do a batch of panels all at once instead of saying, oh, I want to go painting today, so let me prime a panel, and then the next day I want to go painting, let me prime another panel. So if you get a bunch of them ready, that's going to save you time in the long run, and I think you're going to be more prone to paint having surfaces all ready to go. So now I might put a little bit of water just to get this to flow, but overall I'm going to just try to put this on as it comes out of the jar. Let me scoop this up for you. Yeah, just a little bit of water to get that to flow. That would be helpful. I talked about sanding between coats to get a smoother surface and then even after my second coat is dry I usually sand it down some as well but if you like heavy texture then maybe don't sand that second coat it kind of all goes back to that experimentation idea just finding what type of surface you like to work on I think that's really important for every artist to figure out for themselves as you brush the, uh, the primer on. If you're not going to roll it or try to smooth it out at all, I would highly recommend doing some random direction brush strokes like this. You don't want to have everything in one direction. Otherwise, you're going to just see this consistent pattern showing through the paint. So just kind of do a random crisscross pattern as you apply that. But if you're going to try to smooth it out, then that's not really necessary. We can just take the roller here and I'm trying to lightly go over the surface and that is knocking down some of the brush stroke texture so it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. It is leaving some little ridges though. I'm not sure why that's happening. Just go over it till you smooth it all out. Okay. That is looking nice. So once that dries, I'll sand that down. I'm just going to scoot this to the side and keep moving on with my other panels here. And then I'll check back in with you in a moment. Okay, I wanted to show you real quick the texture if you wanted to leave it with a brushy texture. That's what it looks like. And compared to the rolled texture, which I really like this texture here. It's kind of a, almost like an eggshell type of texture. It's really smooth, but there's a little bit of tooth in there. So I'm really happy with that. But once again, that's a very personal thing if you want to leave it with some texture. You can put even more texture than this in your panels. There are acrylic mediums that you can put in to really get that thick, goopy texture in the painting. So try it out. Try a few different ways. See what you like. And then all you got to do is clean up. And uh, something you're going to want to do is, especially if you get this Michael Harding primer, is try to save as much as you can. This one jar was about $30. Which, if you consider the cost for buying pre-primed panels, it's not bad. 
uh, you know, I think you're going to definitely, you know, get your money's worth out of it. You can see I only used a little dollop of it and I covered all of these panels. The Liquitex, this is about 10 bucks and they're pretty close in size. This is 500 milliliters. The Liquitex is 473 milliliters for this size anyway. But to be honest, what I did for the first coat is I used the Liquitex and then I'm just using the Michael Harding for the second coat, except for that first one that I showed you. So that's another way you could save money and still get that uh, non-absorbent quality for your second surface. I'll put links to these in the description and you can play around with those. The Michael Harding you do have to order, but the Liquitex you should be able to find at one of your local hobby supply stores. All right, so I hope that was helpful for you. And uh, let me know if you have any questions on priming your panels. I'm by no means an expert, but these are some tips that have helped me throughout the years. So hope you have a great day and happy painting.